Alrighty y'all, welcome back to the Ellis Mowers channel. Um, y'all saw a while back, um, I posted on my Instagram and uh, also uh, did a little preview on one of my vlogs just as an update as to what how the season was going. I got these two mowers, traded basically two for one. Um, guy had a 16 horse Craftsman, 42 inch, 6 speed, had the smaller back tires on it. Um, had it listed for 375 just traded these two for one both of them are running um, and both of them are twin cylinders we're going to work on this one nearest me first that has the bumper guard on it this one is a 42 inch six speed as well however it has the a v twin on it an 18 and a half horsepower craftsman and uh like i said cranks runs drives um, issue being, it has a uh, problem with the transaxle where it won't where it won't go backwards. And I think it only goes one speed, so I think it's an easy fix. We're going to try it. Um, so let's drive it into the garage here, or at least attempt to. Um, apart from that, it's in good shape. You put it and gave me a battery with it. It's good. Ooh, that's in the back on this one. Usually they're in the front with a twin cylinder. Uh, brand new battery last year, so only about a year old. Firm connections. Uh, and let's see. Here's your model number, 917-270-752. And then here's your serial, 516-2000 is when it was made. So again, about a 20-year-old mower. You get a ton of these hunter green looking craftsman's if you look on the marketplaces and stuff for long enough it appears all the tires are holding air pretty good probably just need a little bit of air in a couple of them um it's got these weird looking headlights on it i don't know if they even work but we're gonna see here in just a second um, and i'll show you what the symptoms it's doing um, i do have i was able to shove the lever into reverse but you feel there's like no um resistance at all changing gears and it's just doing weird stuff so um, we're going to put it in i don't i think he's got it locked on one speed and i just think it needs adjusting and tightening just based on some videos that i've looked at but let me crank it up and that way y'all can at least hear it run
hear the blade still spinning a little bit when you turn it off. So um, you th I think it's got a little bit of an issue with, uh, let me turn off this music. There we go. Uh, a little bit of issue with uh, carb. I think it just needs a little bit of run time and some sea foam, and I think we'll be all right with that. Um, and probably just need to, um, like I've done with so many others, do that, do that uh, fix with the blades. Um, to where, you know, how, uh, gets, gets those grooves worn out in the, um, blade engaged. I think it's got an issue with that too. Pretty standard with all these mowers. Um, I think, let's see. I don't know if the, I actually don't even know if the brakes hold neither. So, might be misaligned because, well, So we'll see that as well. Um, it'll be kind of nice here. Let's uh, let's see. I might can get to it without having to do anything because your blade, your uh, gear mechanism's right there. And like I said, I don't think I don't think it was placed on here correctly. I see this bolt right here is a little loose. And I think, well, let's just see what we got. This is an experiment for me as well. So let me do a little bit of working on this. I'm going to get this right wheel up. Well, I might get the right wheel off just to give me a little bit better access. And um, we will see what we have here. All right, y'all, so I got the wheel off. Look down here and see if you can see the axle turning. And you'll see what it does whenever I try and hit the shift lever. So I don't know if y'all saw that. Um, what it's doing there is you try and you slam it back in reverse and it's still moving just a little bit. Uh, it's like it only has two speeds and you gotta like slam it forward in order to get it into the other speed, which is kind of weird. But there we go. So I think something is I know something's misadjust, misaligned on it. I don't think the transaxle's bad. I really don't. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back access plate off. I'm probably take the back of the back tire off too, just to get better access. And then I'm going to um, figure out this mechanism here. Um, something's associated with the adjustment, I think, right here. So we're going to see if that changes anything, um, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so let me show you what I'm doing. This is the shaft for the gears here. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna disconnect my gear lever here from the um, rest of the mower and uh, just the gear lever. And uh, I'm gonna see if I can get this thing to turn because right now the issue is that I think this is supposed to be some sort of slotted gear selector here and it's getting caught up I don't know if it's getting caught up in the transaxle or getting caught up somewhere else but um, it's doing only like two speeds and it's resisting really hard so you can see it it's turning back here on the back but it's not turning in the front there so I'm wondering if he didn't get the shaft driven all the way in or if he doesn't have the right slotted transaxle or bolt or washer or something because this right here this right here is slotted right there and that allows you to make your gear selections but it's not it's sliding and not moving so i'm wondering if it's off the grooves a little bit or wallet out 
Like it's gonna be kind of fun if it's wallet out because I really don't know if I can get parts for this. But here's the model of the transaxle. It's a peerless P173-0072, it looks like. Oh, that's the data manufacturer, excuse me. Data manufacturer says it's actually 2017, so this is almost a brand new transaxle. The model is H MS T 206545C. Those are all your numbers there. Um, one of those numbers will get you what you need. The date stamp on the bottom here as well, so it's showing, you know, if like you split it open, then uh, they got stickers on both sides. Either way, let me get a, I think it's a 9 16 or a 5 8 right there to get that bolt off. I can get this bolt off for actually right here. That's a half. And I got a nut right here on the back here that I got to get off. And that will allow me to get the shift lever and mechanism and stuff off here. And then we'll be able to look a little bit better into this thing and see what we've got going on. Alright, so I've gotten a lot of things off here, um, just off camera. I basically, it's just a few bolts. I just took this mechanism off. This is dangling because uh, the ball is still on the gear slider. You don't have to take this completely off the mower. But the bracket that has the whole gear selector and stuff mechanism on it, right here I took off. And this right here is supposed to be slotted and grooved on the inside. And as you can see, it's actually split on both sides here. And so what it's doing is it's slipping and the uh, grooves on the inside are worn on it. And so it's just slipping back and forth on the mechanism. I'm going to take this model number and I'm going to see if I can find me, a, uh, um, I guess, a gear selector washer. I don't know what the part's called, truthfully. But the rest of it is fine. What I have done, and I have confirmed that reverse works because I just checked, and, re and it's going backwards. I just pulled the, I just cranked it up and um, pulled the, uh, well, I'll say this much. Changing gears without a gear selector is a little challenging. I took a pry bar and I took a hammer and was able to get to the gear selector, which is right back there. So I did that, and pushing it forward slows the speed, and then also eventually will put it into reverse. So I ended up finding neutral on it, and then I ended up putting it in reverse. I think i got to do some brake work to this thing, too, but we'll do that after I get this transaxle fixed. And then I took a hammer on this side and was able to pull, push it, or like hit it, and that'll get you going faster. So um, the transaxle's working. The, the problem, thankfully is only this right here, where you see where it's cracked, just from stress and use and probably abuse and all other stuff. Um, it's not walled out on the inside, so what I might do, I don't know if it would help, or I don't know if I could pull this off. I probably can't pull it off because of uh, the way that this thing is. I'm curious if I can weld this together weld the gear selector on to this mechanism and just call it a day. I don't know what y'all think about that, but it only takes me a couple more bolts to get that arm off, and I'll show you the bolts. Because the groove, it looks, I don't think the grooves are walled out after looking at it and talking with y'all on camera here. Um, but here's the other side of it. You can just push it in, and then there's a couple of bolts that hold it. There's actually just one, I think, right there that holds it onto the gear selector. I just gotta get that off, and then I can pull this, pull that little rod out. And I'm gonna try and weld that back on, and see what we got. All right, y'all, here is the part. I ordered this thing on a Thursday evening off of eBay, paid stamp, paid standard shipping. This thing was in my mailbox Saturday. Incredible. 
This one might have been the one that actually shipped within the state, so it might have not had to go very far. But still, that's pretty impressive going just through the postal service. It's really cool. I don't think I've ever had one come that quick. Here's your part number for that coupler. Um, 532, well, that's kind of like 917 on the tractors. 444304 is probably the number that you're going to need. I think that number right there would also, this whole number will get you what you need. Shift Hub is what the proper name for this is called. I was calling it a coupler, some, not a bushing, but you can probably tell in this newer, this one that looks nice, that you see those little keyways in there. It kind of keeps the shifter in line and it doesn't crack around the, uh, or it doesn't, it doesn't, sp not supposed to cause stress around this, um, outer ring here um, supposed to kind of keep everything in line and then it goes into the shifter knob and the whole linkage so i am going to have to take the linkage back off because y'all probably saw my welding job didn't work especially after after i had to grind down the welds and i still wouldn't i don't think i'd have been comfortable selling that because of how tight all that fits together this part think was five dollars with three dollars worth of shipping it was right around ten dollars to get it here and ten dollars to me and the peace of mind of selling that mower to somebody with having that part replaced on it and it working properly hopefully working properly i've got it going into all the gears um will be good so i We'll get to working on that. And uh, what I'll do here, because this video is getting kind of long after we've been troubleshooting and whatnot, I'm going to end this video here and give you all a nice little teaser to part two. We're going to put this shifter knob in. And um, at that point, I hope we will fix it. And. After that, I'll just have to do the standard grinding out the grooves on the deck. Give it a good clean. I got an air filter on the way. Uh, deck belt's good, so I'm not going to worry about the deck belt. Drive belt looks good. Um, so we'll get to going on that. And uh, I've got a, a hunter green craftsman's galore in here right now. Uh, but we'll get that in part two. I appreciate y'all watching as always. Um, if you want to follow me at lsmowers09 on Instagram or and or Facebook, I'm on both of those platforms, or you can just search Ellis Mowers, and that'll get you where you need to go. Just find the same seal on uh, my platforms right here, the same one on YouTube. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video, and hopefully in part two, we will have a running and driving, properly running and properly driving craftsman ready for sale. Catch all them.